The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, the second Sunday in Lent. We're looking at Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 13a. It says there, Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth, with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. My dear friends in Christ, Jacob had begun this journey from Palestine to Haran because he and his mother Rebekah had just deceived his father Isaac into giving to him, to Jacob, the birthright that Isaac wanted to give to Esau, his older twin brother. And now normally this birthright would be given to the eldest son, but God had revealed to Isaac that this blessing was supposed to be passed on to Jacob instead. Isaac tried to give the blessing to Esau. He devised a plan in which he was going to give that blessing to Esau, but but he failed. He failed because when Rebekah learned of that plan, she came up with another deception. And in this deception, she had Jacob disguise himself as if he were Esau so that Isaac, who was nearly blind at this particular time, so that he would think that Jacob was Esau and would give the blessing to Jacob instead. And that plan did succeed. Tragically, though, what Rebecca and Jacob did, that was something that was wrong. We don't believe in the ends justifying the means. They did get accomplished what God wanted accomplished, but they used sin in order to accomplish it. They should have let the Lord take care of things so that the blessing would go to Jacob as God had planned. Isaac, he was upset about being deceived as he was. But in general, you would say that he wasn't absolutely furious with Jacob because he did recognize that this was God's will, that Jacob should get the blessing and not Esau. However, Esau was furious. He was so angry that he wanted to kill his brother. And because he wanted to kill his brother, Isaac and Rebekah told Jacob that what he needed to do is he needed to leave. He needed to make a 500-mile trip approximately to go to Haran, to go to Haran so that he'd be safe from his brother, his murderous threats, and so that he could also find a wife who wouldn't worship the Canaanite idols that were worshipped all around them in the land of Palestine. Well, Jacob was on that trip, and when he left, he had to feel as if he had just completely wrecked things, if he had completely messed things up, he was troubled by the fact that he had deceived and tricked his father, made his father upset with him. And he had to be upset about the fact that here his, his own twin brother wanted to try to kill him, to get rid of him. Jacob had to feel depressed. He had to feel all alone. 
But as he was traveling one night, what happened is he found a place to, to sleep for the night. And when he found that place to sleep for the night, God spoke to him through a dream or a vision. And this is the first of several dreams or visions that God used to talk to Jacob. Moses tells us, Jacob had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord. What an awesome sight that must have been. It reminded Jacob of the constant communication and fellowship that exists between God and man. Never is God out of touch. And even though, well, in the picture there, the expanse between the heavens above and the earth below is something that is so great in this picture anyway, yet God is still in constant contact with, with us. He's in constant contact with us. Of course, God is omnipresent. That means that he is present everywhere. That's a concept that is something that we just really can't fathom, this being everywhere like that. But in this picture, on that stairway, there were messengers of God. That's his angels, God's servants that God created to serve us, to take care of us, to watch out for us. Those, those angels, they were ascending and descending on that staircase, getting us to think about how, well, they take our prayers and our needs to the throne of God in heaven, and then they bring back God's answers and God's protection. The angels were there, and at the top of the staircase was the Lord himself. What a comfort that picture, that image had to be for Jacob. He had felt all alone. He felt that he had probably just totally messed up his life. He messed up his relationship, especially between his brother and himself. But the Lord, the God of free and faithful grace was still with him. God had not forsaken Jacob. Here we are reminded of God's constant presence with believers, with you and with me. We probably have all at times in the course of our life felt a little bit like Jacob did prior to seeing that vision. We've probably all gotten into arguments, maybe even fights with our spouse or our parents or our kids or our neighbors, our coworkers, and maybe we were at fault for those fights and arguments. And after those arguments, maybe we felt all depressed and all alone, kind of like Jacob did, as if everything was going wrong. Well, if you ever feel that way, or maybe I should say when you feel that way, remember Jacob's vision here. Remember Jacob's dream here. That stairway from heaven to earth is a stairway that we can also realize exists between God and us, between you and God. God's angels are always with us to take our prayers and our needs to God and bring back his answers and his protection. Our Lord himself is always here with us. And even though there are billions of people on this earth, yet God knows about each of us individually. He's always there for each of us individually. The psalmist said, my help comes from the Lord. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will neither slumber nor sleep. As 
we live in this sinful world, as we face life's trials, troubles, and temptations, look to God for his help and his strength. Call upon him in the day of trouble. He will deliver you. Don't ever forget about God's constant presence with believers, with you and with me. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful reminder that you are always here with us, giving us your help and your strength. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.